My name is Jessica Perez, and I am going to speak about what gender means to me. Um, gender means to me what I am, which is a female. Um, it's actually um, something I have practiced in being for 30 years. I've been several types of females. I've been a mother, an aunt, a daughter, um, you know, so on and so forth. A female worker in um, uh, experienced professional worker, rather. Um, basically, this is what I find. Um, I'm just going to bring it down to reality. Is what our parents teach us. Is what our mothers teach us. Me being a descendant of a Puerto Rican woman um, who was not educated, pretty much showed me um, to not be the typical um, Hispanic woman. Don't iron your man's clothing. Don't cook for him. Don't do this. Don't do that. And basically, when I, when I, uh, when as as I was growing up, I, you know, I was very um, tomboyish. I liked boys, but I was very tomboyish. I played baseball. I played basketball. Um, you know, I, I chilled with the boys and stuff like that. But as I became an adult, I became submissive to the man because that's where the heart lied. So based, so in that, you know, my mother. In, in turning into a mother and um, an adult woman, my mother kind of like changed cables on me, you know? Like she was like, you know, oh, you have to like cook and you have to do this and you have to do that. And it sort of like confused me. So now I'm a mother and I'm confusing my daughter because I'm basically telling her, you gotta finish school. You're going to, you know, do what you gotta do. You're gonna travel. You're going to do everything that society says women should not do, okay? But on that note, you have to act like a lady. You have to do this and you have to do that. And you know, so it's kind of like we contradict each other in all aspects of being a woman, you know? So it's kind of like you have to like decide not so much of, of what type of woman you're gonna be, but what type of person you're going to be, you know? like to talk about the dualistic roles of feminine gender, of, of women, how they're viewed as this is what you're supposed to be or how it's projected from society as a constraint. Um, going back to religion, as we discussed earlier, the story of Adam and Eve and many other different religions and cultures that make you believe that a woman should be a certain way. And then you have feminist groups and women themselves want to be perceived in another way. And there's just so many different aspects to what a woman should be, like uh, Simone Bouvier, how she defined woman as this other thing, and how she begins her argument by defining what a woman should be or, or who we think a woman should be like. Um, in America today, I want to talk about the dualistic roles. We have women, on one hand, being objectified in magazines and billboards. And most women are okay with that. They want to be in music videos, and they feel like it's okay to objectify yourself to get to the top of some industries, or they feel it's right. And then we have women who are conservative and who want to get ahead in the work environment, and we're being held back. And there's just many different constraints on that as well. When I was reading our textbook, I came through this um, definition called the glass ceiling, and it's a uh, phenomenon where in a workplace, if a woman does, does not act the way she's supposed to act, like if she's not feminine, nurturing, or caring, she won't be promoted, and it's an invisible but a very real factor that holds a lot of women in America and worldwide back from getting up to the top executive levels. Now, as society and as, as like people define and kind of confine what a woman should be, it's like how how am I as a woman? How am I going to act? You know, for my benefit. That's a couple of different um, choices that it's hard because there's so many different factors. You know, you have women like Hillary Clinton who are criticized a lot because she's not a normal woman. She's wearing pantsuits and she's constantly criticized. Like the world doesn't need more Hillary Clintons because she's just too assertive and, or, and you know she's too manly and that's how they gain um, you know, 
And then you have other women who are very feminine and accepted, like you have the Sarah Palins, you know, who represent conservative people and are accepted because she is supposed to reflect the textbook definition of what a woman should be. So today I would like to sort of argue the point that instead of putting women into definitions, we want to view them as individuals and not <coughs> discriminate them as a gender. I'm here to discuss gender with you. Um, gender to me is just the human race. It's not necessarily like man-woman battle. Gender to me is gender. As deer, there's a buck and a doe, male and female, and that's it. Now, women have been perceived as less than human for quite some time. So mm, she, she moved, gathers eh? plenty of strong evidence proving so. And um, one point that she makes that I uh, was really shocked about was that Aristotle stated that women are naturally defective. <laughs> That's really upsetting to me. <laughs> now, throughout time, there's been a constant struggle with women and male arrogance. As a result of this, currently stated by Hillary Clinton, women make 77 cents to the man's dollar. That's okay for current time, considering how bad it's been in the past but it's still not the whole dollar. We deserve that. So, um, in my past experience in construction administration, I actually had a job that paid good money, $18 an hour, and I did administration. I also went out on the field. I had to do a multitude of things. Now, there was a gentleman who had the same job as me. He made $22 an hour, and I made 18 with the 18 that I made, I also had to get every man breakfast on the construction site. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he didn't at all. He didn't have to do any motherly duties. So this is proof right in your face about the gender discrepancy, which shouldn't be because, like I said, we're all human in the end. That's it. We can both put up a good fight. In closing, I'd like to remind you, women, to keep focused and stay steady on consistently disproving men that we will be able to gain their whole dollar. We will be able to make the exact same amount, and it'll be worth the same amount of work. It's everything, it's everything. We can definitely do it. I'm not speaking from a feminist point of view. I'm not speaking from any point of view other than human that we should all